Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. I think I'm going to be making good on um, a donation that asked that I do a video kicking some postmodern ass. Now, this guy is uh, pretty good. I like him. I like almost everything he does and says. His name is Black Pigeon Speaks. Um, and uh, he's part of something, I don't know, men going their own way and the alt-right or something. He does a video called Why Atheism is Vacuous Grandiloquence. Now, vacuous, we might say, would mean meaningless or empty, particularly empty in a meaningless way, or meaningless in an empty way. Grandiloquence, grandiloquence we would say, would be saying it in big words, right? Uh, hiding it behind flowery language. Nietzsche said they muddy their waters in order that they may appear deep. Let's see what's going on here. He begins his video by describing a minuscule, uh, tiny solar system in the midst of this enormous amount of interstellar space and how far away all the other stars are. And then, 27 seconds into the video, he says that there are a billion galaxies in the observable universe. Now, I'm not going to make a big deal out of this, but just pointing out he is not on home territory. He's not comfortable in this area. A billion galaxies in the observable universe? Pfft, no. They actually, with the Hubble Deep Field, the new estimate is around 200 billion galaxies. Not one billion galaxies. There are a billion galaxies in some of the big star, some of the big galaxy clusters. Fucking hell. So, that's Fine. It's not that big of a deal. It just shows you that he did some homework and he looked into some stuff. He's not really at home on this turf. Now, um, he gets extra points for going off in a novice subject, so we'll let him go on that. Uh, but then he says that we appear to be as meaningless as the bacteria that you kill when you brush your teeth. Right? That's what we learn from how big we are and how small we are in the universe. Now, he's pointing out Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins. Uh, he, he mentions those two guys and a couple of the other philosophers. And he says uh, that they have a good point, that it looks pretty ridiculous that God could create all these universes or whatever and really give a darn about what bacteria is doing over here on a speck of dust. He points out, so he's not straw manning us. Now... I want to just pause right here, and this is probably going to be the meat and potatoes of my message in this, uh, which we'll visit again and again. But um, let's accept his premise um, that we are merely bacteria. And let's then say there's not a God. Let's just admit reality. So he's saying in this whole scope of the universe, we look really small. Okay, and there's not a God. Now what do we have? We've got literature, art, philosophy. We've got all the flowering of human history and human civilization, which was apparently the product of a mere bacteria on a speck of dust, floating meaninglessly in vacuous outer space. Now, if that's just too much for your hippie noodle, then it's too much for your hippie noodle. Go running to the nearest church. They'll take your money. You are nothing but bacteria, and we have created some of the greatest imaginable things. Art and literature and history and philosophy and science are created by a monkey species on a speck of dust in vacuous outer space all alone. And when the sun explodes and swallows the earth, if we haven't left the earth, everything we've done will be erased and forgotten and gone. Now, if that blows your mind... Just go running to the nearest church, and they'll help you through it. But for the rest of us, you know, when my head just can't wrap its way around that, I grab a beer, and I say, my God, what a universe we live in. And I call up a friend, and I say, hey, did you hear about Trump? Oh, my God, he's doing a great job. That's what I do when my mind gets blown. I don't go run into the nearest church. But I'll continue. Please let me wet my whistle. Now, at 40 minutes, or 40 seconds in, we were just, now I'm five minutes into this video, we're 40 seconds into his video. He starts to go woo-woo, 
I think it was James Randi. It might have been Daniel Dennett. It's called things woo woo when uh, when oh it's James Randi the magician. When uh, you try to explain things by saying, oh, the alignment of the metaphysical particles in your, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm speaking like Deepak Chopra, because, or whoever that guy is, because he does the woo-woo thing perfectly. Now, Black Pigeon Speaks is pretty reasonable. Why is he going woo-woo? He goes off, go just hit it 40 seconds and listen to the stuff he says about, imagine an omniscient, omnipotent God. Um, and and he can do all this and do all, okay, you are outlining for yourself a pretty deep hole to dig out of because at some point you're going to say that this is okay. Now he actually isn't. He actually makes a utilitarian argument by the end, which is hilarious, and we'll get to that. That's the punchline of the whole thing. Now, at 2 minutes and 30 seconds, he lays down all of his cards and after this he has nothing to hide he drops his pants and shows us everything and now he can't fool us any longer At two minutes and 30 seconds he says where standard sees continued from a sentence where standard science would have you believe that matter gives rise to consciousness rather than the other way around what of course matter gives rise to consciousness of course it does. Consciousness is a property that occurs inside our material universe. Now, to reverse that is so stupid and so far beyond the pale. For, for objectivists, we call it the primacy of consciousness versus the primacy of matter. Either the universe is first or the mind is first. And if you think the mind is first, then pray for cake and wait and see how that works for you. So... He just laid down his cards as being on the side of the primacy of consciousness, or he at least says that he's not going to... He, he, he thinks that the primacy of matter is a naive viewpoint. Okay, you just locked yourself out of all rational... Uh, everything that's rational. <laughs> you now, you now are in the world of Cartesian Platonism. You now are floating nowhere. You are nowhere because you don't have reality anymore. Everything's in the mind, and and reality is secondary to the mind. You are nowhere. You're gone. You're lost. Is that bad enough? He says, but either way, we do not in understand the universe we inhabit. So whether it's primacy of consciousness or primacy of matter, we don't understand it. Thank you for telling me. I, up until, until you told me that, I didn't understand. But now you've told me we don't understand it. Now I understand. Now why is he saying that we don't understand? Because he has some essential understanding of it. Does he? Does he have an essential understanding of it such that he can tell me that we don't understand it? I think we understand it better than he thinks we understand it. And I don't think he understands it. Especially not when he says that we don't understand it. So, speak for yourself, Black Pigeon. Um, I accept my role as a, black, as a piece of bacteria on a speck of dust. I accept that. Now, is your ego big enough? No, apparently not. Apparently you, your ego requires that you be the center of some amazing solipsistic thing where God is your soul in this beam of light. No, you don't matter. If you die in a car wreck tomorrow and you don't have any friends or family, nobody's going to remember you. They're all going to forget you and nobody and nothing matters anyway because everyone's going to forget them too. All of us are going to die and nothing matters. Now get over it. Have a fucking beer and calm down. Don't go out saying that Christianity is somehow good. And that's where we're going next. He now goes on to list all of the good things in Western civilization that link to Christianity, according to him. Um, let's see, he's, uh, he, he mentions things like uh, helping your neighbor and charity and goodwill to other people and so on. Ooh, what about freedom of speech? What about ownership of weapons? No, those are not. <laughs> No, the Christians tell you to turn your other cheek. And they tell you to spread the word of the Lord. You're not to, meant to be concerned with allowing blasphemers to speak as they please. That's nowhere in Christianity allow the blasphemer to go his way. They say spread the word of the Lord. 
God is nigh. Christ is coming again. All right. All these good things that he finds. Charity and goodwill and so on. <clears throat> this is where objectivists as historical philosophers are the only ones that have anything to say. Because we're going to point out that the good things that you find in Western civilization go back to ancient Greece, not to Christianity. And that Christianity is like the leech clinging on to the healthy body of the Greek hero. And the Greek hero marches forward in time. He is Aristotle. Uh, Plato is the leech clinging on to Aristotle. So where we have Christianity in the West, we have a weakness or an expense. It's an expense. We can get along without it. Wealthy countries get along without Christianity. It's only poorer countries. And when, when wealth income gaps increase, in other words, when people get poorer, they tend to be more religious. That should tell you something. We can solve the religion problem just by having wealthier society. Just capitalism itself makes religion dissipate. So, um, so much for the idea that religion makes things good. No, people turn to religion when things are bad because when they're good, you have no use for making yourself feel better with fairy tales about how great you are and how important you are and how wonderful your soul is and how everything's all about you. So, there we go. We need to focus on the fact that Aristotle is at the core of Western civilization and that Christianity derogates and destroys and minimizes. We've got to push back against this because when the Muslims get beaten, it's not going to be the atheists that will have done a lot of the heavy lifting. It will have been Christians. Christianity, when they beat Muslims, are going to think they beat the Muslims. So we've got to be careful not to give them too much breathing space in the meantime. Don't give, them, don't give them this argument that Christianity is at least good in the sense that our societies in the West look better than societies in the East. That is nonsense because there was nothing more Christian than Hitler and, and Nazi Germany. National socialism. Poverty eradicated by, by payments, welfare payments to the poor, to single mothers, to homeless people and if you if they're useless you take them out and shoot them right because why not once you're only there to benefit society and the individual doesn't matter anymore that's where christianity goes it's a form of collectivism now he before he finishes his video he's got one more sucker punch at eight minutes and 20 seconds he says that science is by nature handicapped when it comes to explaining consciousness so he's doing sort of a replay of what he did earlier why is consciousness such a big deal? Because then we, have, we can hide the soul in there somewhere. Now, if consciousness isn't really that big of a deal, then he loses this argument. But the way he goes about it is, he claims that he has some sort of essential knowledge about consciousness. And that essential knowledge that he has, he can use to tell you that science can never know essentially what consciousness is. Now I don't know how he got that knowledge about consciousness and why he thinks science can't get sufficient knowledge about consciousness, but if he thinks that he can offer this essential knowledge about consciousness, about every consciousness in the universe for all time can never be accessed by science, where did he get that kind of knowledge? So, yeah, I guess this is a note from the skeptic community, uh, actually from the objectivist community. The skeptics are off on their own, doing their weird thing, looking at arbitrary assertions and accepting arbitrary assertions as cognitive material. That won't go down here. Black Pigeon Speaks does well. I love many of his videos, much of his work. But atheism is not vacuous grandiloquence. This video upholding Christianity of Black Pigeon Speaks, that is vacuous grandiloquence.